And how about those families who find it harder to engage? You know, maybe they've had difficult experience themselves with schools, might not be so willing to kind of come in. Do you have any ideas for how we can break down those barriers a little bit, make it less scary for them? Um, I am a champion of releasing stigma and shame around any difference that anybody has. We have to be a really inclusive community. So what we do is we look at making change and we release the stigma around talking about mental health and challenge within families. And we offer families the opportunities um, for hope to make change in their situation. And what that might look like is in our school, we offer a weekly empowerment session for families to engage with. And we look at the reasons behind um, challenge and we give them solution focused approaches um, to make a difference. So could you give us an example of what one of those solution focused approaches might be, just a, a practical example? Yeah, so an example of um, one of our practical strategies would be that parents would come into the environment um, and be able to explore issues that they have within their families and we'll have one-to-one -one coaching sessions with them to try and explore some change that can happen um, and we also go back and collect voice to see if that has been sustainable within their families. Fantastic. And how do you get away from the idea that sometimes parents might feel like you're telling them what to do or that it's kind of almost like a criticism of what they're doing at the moment? Do you ever face that issue? I think it's about working transparently with families and sometimes um, as a professional myself I share that I don't always find my own parenting capacity at its best. Yeah. Um, so I think it's about being authentic, reaching out to families, not telling them what to do, not a dumb two task, but giving them um, some support and hope and just be with that person to to explore a situation that they have um, and give them some solutions but ensuring that they drive that journey because what we don't want to create is needy families we want families to be resilient and be able to flourish in their life after and in the aftermath of leaving um, our primary school setting we want them ready for life and you said that an important part for you is about actually kind of assessing whether or not this is having an impact and whether it's sustainable. Have you found sometimes that you've had to change what you're doing as a result of that kind of feedback loop? We're constantly revisiting our strategies and changing them. Um, society is very uncertain at the moment, so we need to change with the times. Um, we collect pupil voice and parent voice and teacher voice in many different ways. Yeah. Um, we reach out to our communities, we do face-to-face -face feedback, we offer um, annual questionnaires, uh, we have suggestion boxes, we have notice boards all around school and we make sure that everything we offer is interactive because it's the stakeholders in our school community that drive our passion and um, sustain our strategies for well-being and positive mental health within education. Absolutely. and. A lot of the schools that I work with talk about how this engaging with families is a particularly difficult thing and it might be one of the challenges that they, they find is, is, is most difficult to work out what to do. What do you think should be the first thing, you know, if they, if they were going to do something tomorrow uh, to make a difference to that, that kind of engagement, what's, what do you think they should do first? I think um, for schools, if you were going to, going to make one change tomorrow and one action, I would simply start by making yourself present and visible within the school community. So for me, what that looked like is I would make sure that I was out on the playground in the mornings, after school, um, I would engage in conversations. I think it's really important not to be too rigid with your offer for, for family support. You need to ask them what they like to see offered in the school community. Um, and that's a, that's a valuable resource that I continually revisit when I'm looking at new strategies for parent engagement. And why do you think being present in that way makes such a difference? Why does it matter? Because we don't want a barrier between teaching staff, leadership and families. We are a community, we are all at one, we're all there for a purpose. We want our children to thrive and we all have the child's best interest at heart. If you're starting a conversation with a family member, it's important to say, I know how important your child is for you, and that makes them really important to us. What can we do collectively together for the best life outcomes for your child and for your family?